Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Maranatha, come. Come, oh God. Come, oh God. Let your name not be to a reproach. Come, oh God. Visit families again. Come, oh God. Visit Africa again. Come, oh God. Visit Nigeria again. Come, oh God. Visit the West again. Visit the East again. Visit the South South again. Visit the North again. one minute and say Lord visit again visit again visit again don't tell me Apostle Babalola's story he has gone visit us again don't tell me about Archbishop Benson Itahosa he has joined the cloud of witnesses visit again oh God don't tell me about Catherine Kuhlman don't tell me about Emmy Temple McPherson Visit again, oh God. Let history be rewritten. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. Revive us again. Shabakata Katoskatea. Visit again. Visit again. In your power. Visit again. In the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus three platforms please write The nations will see again before he comes not everybody is playing games the nations will see again for the sake of one person a family will see Jesus again oh yes for the sake of someone who is in this crowd for the sake of someone in the overflows for the sake of someone watching by television for your sake he will come again Hallelujah. Two years ago, I was preparing for a meeting in Lagos and I had a vision. There was a denomination in this nation, I will not mention the name, that there was once a mighty and a great move of God across that denomination. And for a while it looked like things faded away. While I was praying and preparing for that meeting, I saw light from heaven just returning back to that denomination and God told me that for the sake of the founding fathers that he is about to start raising genuine sons ordinary men trained by the spirit and he will empower them in such a way let me submit to you the people carrying authentic power are not yet in manifestation they are still in training believe me when I tell you thank God for what you are seeing but I'm telling you prophetically, I have seen it. There is going to be an emergence of power like you have not seen. Three platforms. Help us tonight, oh God. If this message does not touch you, it's a sign that you are not serious with God. And it's a sign that you are not interested in the program of God. Number one, the first biblical platform that helps men access superior power 
to demonstrate and validate that Jesus is alive and to be able to be a revelation of his life and power to the nations. The first platform is an encounter with the spirit of power. Please write it down. Ah. Encounter with the spirit of power. Please write it down. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us. I want to know you. I want to hear your voice. I want to know you, Lord. I want to touch you. I want to see your face. I want to know you. I want to know you more. I want to know. brought to the foot of the cross in one day in one year this is the dimension God is taking us to hallelujah please hear me if you're a medical personnel here I want you to listen there is an outpouring that is coming on people who are medically related there is a reason why you see, the study of medicine is not an academic issue at all. Please help our medical stand, my God. Look what is happening there. In the name of Jesus Christ. Doctor, if the only thing you can give is injection and drugs, you may not do much in this end time because there has to be power upon your hands. More than the syringe, there has to be strange manifestation in our hospitals. Resurrections from the dead, healings, miracles, that you lay hands and dry away cancer lay hands dry away all kinds of demonic things hear me if you are called into the medical field i am telling you there is an anointing an end time anointing that is looking for you medical doctors lab attendants all kinds of people nurses midwives that a woman is about to lose her baby and you are on duty you will just stop that lab coat and carry your priestly regalia in the name of Jesus. I command supernatural delivery. An encounter. Please sit down if you can with the spirit of power Micah chapter 3 and verse 8 but truly I am full of power by the spirit of the Lord it is the Holy Spirit that empowers men please look up respectfully speaking bottles don't anoint water does not anoint handkerchiefs and mantles don't anoint until an anointed person anoints them to be a point of contact so idolizing a bottle a handkerchief an apron a, a, you can have 30 bottles of oil in your house it will not produce anything until an anointed man anoints it as a medium if we, if it is done within the boundary of scripture we keep making a fool of ourselves placing our faith in mediums and look, looking away from the Spirit of God. It says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. If your anointing is without the presence of the Spirit, something is wrong with that impartation. The Holy Spirit is the exclusive custodian of the power of God. 
the administration of spiritual power resides within the office of the Holy Spirit. When there was creation to be done in Genesis 1, he was the first of the Godhead to be revealed. Is someone learning? 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 an encounter with the spirit of power there is a dimension of the revelation of the holy spirit called the spirit of power it says for god had not given us the spirit of fear but the spirit of power the spirit of love these are all dimensions of the same holy spirit you can encounter the spirit of wisdom but have you encountered the spirit of power how shall these things be mary said seeing that i know not a man he said the power of the highest shall overshadow you how shall nations be saved 2.6 billion compared to 8 billion people and growing let me tell you the truth at the rate at which we are going even if another thousand years is added we will not be able to cover the globe but when the power of the holy spirit comes into that equation believe me when i tell you nations will be saved in one day because god will create spectacular events that will bring nations to their knees one miracle in gadara brought 10 cities to jesus 10 10 cities one woman at the well brought so many people to Jesus. An encounter with the spirit of power. The Holy Spirit can reveal himself as the spirit of power. But listen to me. There are two conditions to have an encounter with this dimension of the spirit's power. Listen carefully. Number one, I have taught you, you want encounters? Encounters are sponsored by the genuineness of your heart condition. Please write it. Under point one, forget about genuine spiritual encounters when your heart is not right with God. The heart condition. We are not talking of perfection. We are talking of sincerity and hunger. Jeremiah 17 and verse 10. A few scriptures very quickly. Jeremiah 17 and verse 10. 17, 10. I the Lord search the heart. I try the reins to give every man according to his ways. Not according to his desire. According to his ways. When you seek the Lord with your heart, then you will find him. Jeremiah 29, 13. 29, 13. Same Jeremiah. The heart condition. The first puzzle that must be solved if you desire an encounter with the spirit of God, even the spirit of power, you shall seek me and find me when ye search for me with all your heart. You can search for me with your mind. You can search for me with your ego. But it is when you search for me with all your heart. Lord, it is either you or nothing. I love the song that the worship team sang. It is either you or nothing Jeremiah 27 and verse 5 it says I have made the earth the man and the beast that are upon the ground by my great power and my outstretched arm it says, and I have given it to whom it seemed meet unto me. The same power that I used to make the earth and heavens, I give it to whom it seemed good to me. That means I fed people. I can't trust someone with something so precious. There is something about your heart. Your heart for God. Lord, I am available. I'm available. The heart condition is the first requirement you want to encounter the spirit of power you must trust God to check your heart and vet the sincerity of your motives listen carefully 
the sincerity of your motive. I want power because I want a name. Forget it. Not this end time. God is too serious for that kind of joke. I want power because I want to also be a... <clears throat> Whoever you want to heal, Lord, you can heal through me. Whoever you want to bless, Lord, you can bless through me. That's the kind of heart as the deer pans after the water brooks. Lord, it is you or nothing else. Ah, it is you or nothing else. Thank God for money. Thank God for fame. It is you or nothing else. And God says, you are doing this for me. You are ready to experience power like never before. Please hear me. Let me speak especially those of us who are in ministry. You've heard me preach many messages about the heart. Believe me. I have read my Bible a bit and I have walked with God a bit. The greatest second to none determinant of the dealings of God with men as far as the investment of power and being used as a witness is not his love because the same Lord is rich unto all. But what distinguishes men into spiritual cadres is number one, the state of your heart. You can be so qualified like Eliab and God will reject you looking for a smelly shepherd because he has seen your heart. It was David who wrote his sin and offense and said they should read it as a song. He was not even embarrassed about it. That is a kind of heart condition and God said you are a man after my heart. Number two, the second dimension, if you want to encounter the spirit of power, I'm still on point one. Maybe that can be one A now, and this is one B. Prayer and fasting. The ministry of prayer and fasting is directly connected to spiritual power. Prayer with fasting. Luke chapter one. For the sake of time, we'll read 1, 2, and 14. Luke chapter 4, 1, 2, 13. Or 1, 2, 14. The Bible says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from the Jordan and was led by the same Spirit he was full of into the wilderness. You would think the coming of the Holy Spirit would be the end of it. He was full of the Holy Spirit. And by the leadership of the Holy Spirit, he was led. Verse 2. The Bible says, And being forty days tempted of the devil, in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended afterwards, he was hungered. Fasting, praying are irrefutable biblical keys as far as access to power is concerned. Now, I tell you, fasting is not everything. Prayer is not everything. They have their roles, the major roles they have to play. But when it has to do with the ministry of power, forget it. If you do not submit yourself to the ministry of prayer and fasting. Praying one day will not bring you power. Praying six months will not bring you power. The, the power that comes through prayer requires consistency until you become a slave to that dimension. Then you are endued with power. Please hear me, believers. This is how we started. I know you have heard me say I'm a product of many anointings. Don't think I was just lying down and various hands were laid on me. No, sir. You can meet the most anointed man in the world and receive nothing when your capacity has not been enlarged. Was Jesus not around Judas? Was Jesus not around Thomas? Why didn't they receive? Power. Prayer and fasting. A generation that understands how to pray with understanding is a generation that will access power. Show me a man of God that commands spiritual power with no honor to the ministry of prayer and fasting. 
I show you a dimension of an operation of a spirit, not the spirit of God. If it's the spirit of God, it will respond to the ministry of prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Whatever attacks your prayer life has attacked your potential to encounter the power dimension of the spirit of God. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. There are men of God who do not submit themselves to intense moments and seasons of prayer and wonder why certain spiritual possibilities don't happen and just generalize it and think everybody who walks in power is just faking it. No. There, are, there is an investment of prayer sacrifice with fasting. Let me tell you. Food is good, but food can be dangerous if you don't have an appetite. You don't have the power to tame it. Are we together? Yes, sir. I know there are all kinds of arguments in the body of Christ about fasting. That's not my assignment tonight. But I'm telling you if it is authentic spiritual power, power as of old you are looking for, the ministry of prayer with fasting. There are people if by 7 a.m. in the morning you don't eat, it will be as if you are having headache. It's a spirit. I assure you. Even medically, it's not even absolutely correct. The day you don't want to fast, you can stay even by 4 p.m. and forget. But the day you say, I will fast, 7.30. And some of you will use Tom Tom or Zobo to break that fast. Is that normal? Is that what will satisfy your hunger? It's a spirit. Let me tell you the truth, there is no gift of fasting. Fasting, all kinds of fasting take discipline. Let no one make you feel that there's an, an extra grace. There is no record of any unusual grace for fasting in the Bible. Fasting affects your spirit, soul, and body. You will feel tired, you will feel the weight of hunger, but it takes you placing value who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame. For someone God is speaking to you, gluttony is what is eating your potential for genuine spiritual power. Talk to spirits, they talk back to you. They keep quiet. Even we are spirits who are not eating. You who wants to cast. <laughs> you don't just tell somebody, come. You don't just speak and you see people are just shouting it takes more than laying on of hands my brother there is a testament praying fasting many of us if we check your prayer account you don't have up to 1000 naira how much and yet you want to buy houses in the spirit you want to buy estates you are joking with 1000 even in a credit system, the bank will not give you money with that kind of bad account. You need to up your game. Wake up in the night. Sala sapakatoshiata. Rakata brandeke bakosati alakatoshia. Wake up in the night. Wake up in the night. Shake slumber out of your body. Wake up in the night. Pray. Pray with seriousness. Don't pray while browsing. You are playing. Don't pray while running around, answering a call and coming back. If it is time to pray, shut down everything. Nothing else matters. Nothing else counts. I'm in the presence of my Maker. Balakatos. Lord, I pray concerning this assignment that you have for me. Who but you can empower a man to take the nations. Lord, there are sick bodies that need to be healed. There are lives and destinies. Only God knows how many dead bodies have been allocated for your anointing to raise back. Only God knows how many wheelchairs are the mercy of your spiritual development. Lord, for my sake, for, for the sake of your name, move, move in and through my life. And one night you will go to pray like every other night. Except that while you are praying, something happens to you that did not happen before. And you will know something has come upon you. The next time you stand before people, God's people, He will honor you 
you run away from him in the secret and want to play church and think he will just honor you in the presence of people you are playing games you see we keep making a fool of ourselves because we think that God plays all kinds of games and gimmicks you think you just stand before people talking and you see people shouting up and down you try it you must pray you must pray there are times you need to settle down pray carry your vision what God has given you place it on the ground and pray Lord you told me my assignment is to raise my five children they will not fail father you sent me as as an apostle as a prophet as an evangelist for your glory as i travel from nation to nation lord i pray in the name of jesus let the two lift gates of the cities be open for the gospel let there be healings lord you have made me a worshiper listen hold on one minute let me talk to you my dear worship people pray oh don't just have good voices for songs you see let me tell you why many 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 people who sing don't bless people they don't pray they only train their voice voice training without a track record of solid prayer the deficiency will show on stage no matter how you twist your voice you are leading praise and worship you don't just rehearse and clear your voice and take lemon and honey and come and sing you are dealing with spirits you are dealing with destinies take out time and pray from that place of prayer the difference will be very clear that you are carrying something on your head Please, my dear people, pray. Worship team, pray. God is raising you. It's not only your songs. It is prayer that puts something on that song. More than melodies. And you stand to lead worship. And as you just raise one song, the glory that emanates from your prayer altar through your voice just sweeps across the place and you are seeing sick bodies getting healed you are not even aware just one song and they say what kind of a worshiper are you it's beyond songs beyond songs it is in the place of prayer you will receive many songs there are songs you don't have the brain to compose they will come by the spirit sometimes you will fall asleep while praying and then you will hear the angels are singing Hosanna in the heights the angels are singing you will not hear any angel with spiritual unseriousness no prayer and fasting please pray I will not give you rules but let me challenge you if you are a serious Christian this is my personal opinion at least there should be a day once a week for you to fast if that is too much then forget about revival believe me this is not a doctrine I'm giving you there's no place like that in scripture but I'm telling you any, as if you are called into ministry, let me challenge you and, and, and admonish you by the message of God. Except you want to make mockery of yourself and make mockery of the name of the Lord through your life. There is a level of stamina. You have to trust God for grace to tame food. It is good to eat. I'm not one of these people that advocate people have died through carelessness and died the death of fools. That's not what I'm teaching you. You want to lay hands on the sick and see miracles? You want to speak the word of God and let it come with power? Man of God, pray. There are some of us who are young, we are just starting and already we are careless. One month, no prayer, no fasting. And I hope you know that fasting is not just a time where you abstain from food and sleep. You are not fasting. Albeit that is important for your health. But that is not fasting. When there is no prayer, what study and worship you did not fast let me repeat when there is no prayer what study and worship you did not fast 
no matter even if you do 48 hours 72 hours that was spent sleeping if there is no prayer word study and worship you did not fast so just because you slept by nine and woke up by four and slept back again and woke up quarter to five and already started arranging your food waiting for six on the dot of course God will honor you he's merciful but I am telling you that's not fasting and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you give us verse 14 Luke 4 14 let's hurry up Luke 4 14 and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit in verse 1 he was driven by the Spirit full of the Spirit but the Bible does not mention power verse 14 having prayed and fasted even though with the Spirit he returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And the Bible says there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. I believe in the ministry of fasting and prayer. Please submit yourself. Fasting is not for men of God. Fasting is not for those in trouble. Fasting is not for those that the doctors say they have diabetes or they have, you know, something that is wrong with them medically. Fasting is for all men. I truly believe that. Prayer with fasting. Prayer with fasting. Prayer with fasting. Hallelujah. If you are pregnant and you have children, don't worry, we'll fast for you. Our fasting will cover you. And even children too can fast. Let me tell you, don't over pamper your children until spirits enter them. Children can fast. You can, they can fast and end by 12. It does not kill them. Don't say my child is too small. Let him grow. By the time he grows, he already has. Do you think that it was a legion that entered the madman in Gadara in one day? They kept coming and calling themselves and said, this man is unavailable to until they became a legion. Encounter with the spirit of power. Number two, the second platform. I hope you got my arrangement. That I'm giving you three biblical platforms for accessing power with God. Number one is through encounters. Encounter with the spirit of power. And that there are two conditions. You want to encounter the spirit of God with his power. Your heart condition. And then the ministry of prayer and fasting. Number two. The second platform for accessing power is... Power that is accessed through the understanding of scripture. There is a dimension of power that is accessed through the understanding of scripture. You can also put in bracket comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom. The second level of spiritual power is accessed through understanding of scripture. Understanding the mysteries of the kingdom. The principles of the kingdom have within them a measure and a dimension of God's power already pre-programmed. Please listen. You can access a dimension of spiritual power based on light, illumination that comes from scripture. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. It says, and now brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance it takes power for you to walk in that inheritance and that because you have embraced the word of god it is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified second peter chapter 3 and verse 18 second peter 3 18 it says but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. 
grow in grace and in the knowledge the original rendition there is not just grow in grace and in the knowledge it is growing grace through the knowledge growing grace and your growth in grace comes through knowledge the higher your level of light the higher the spiritual power that you command are we together now yes there are things you need to know about the kingdom the way the kingdom was built advancement and power is light dependent to the degree to which you access the scriptures that means if someone comes and he said listen there is darkness in this and that area of my life I need help you must have the level of spiritual understanding to be able to guide them to access the power of God that comes through knowledge fight ignorance fight ignorance fight ignorance believers obtain grace to study and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise unto salvation you must obtain grace to have high level spiritual illumination this is the reason why coming to the house of god is very important because the house of god affords you very cheaply the privilege of being methodically mentored guided in partnership with the holy spirit when he the spirit of truth is come before the Holy Spirit came as the spirit of power in Acts chapter 2, Jesus told us that he will come and guide us. You're not going to walk in spiritual power in ignorance. It will be a risk for you to be a powerful but ignorant believer. Power comes with light. Light. Power comes with illumination. And Jesus himself, the powerful, knew what he would do. Is God speaking to someone? Power. For instance, there are certain possibilities in the kingdom that if you just have wisdom that comes through the word, you will know what to do. Let me show you a scripture. I found this scripture and it really blessed me. Proverbs 3.35. While I was preparing this note, I just stumbled across this scripture and it ministered so deeply to me and I added it among the scriptures. It says, the wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools the wise you will always see the glory of God around the life and the corridors of wisdom the wisdom that comes through the word it's impossible for your life to not capture and manifest the glory of God if you submit to the wisdom of the word financial glory glory in terms of influence whatever it is the power of God revealed through your life by reason of accessing wisdom. For instance, if doors have been closed against you and you are trusting God for open doors, it's not just the issue of demons and casting out demons. Maybe you do not have the wisdom to understand the gift and the ministry of men. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, send somebody to my life to help me. And God says that dimension of power is released through understanding the favor of God can come and wait at the corridor of your destiny for many years but because you have not gone to understand the dynamics honor value see your destiny helper can come sent by God to beautify and glorify your life but you use your mouth you use carelessness you use dishonor and lack of discernment to recycle seasons of pain you can pray and fast but because you do not understand the principles of scripture. Hallelujah. This is very important. You must learn the ways of God. There are many of you who don't read books. You don't study any material. You don't learn. The Bible says buy the truth and sell it not. It takes hunger and diligence. Please go online and listen to my message. Buy the truth. I preached it in Takoradi in Ghana. Buy the truth. It's a very, I listed there in that teaching five currencies that we use to buy the truth. Hunger, meekness, honor. These are currencies that we use to buy the truth. You must passionately learn. Learn the things that you do not know. Knowledge is available. Knowledge is more available today than it was any time in history. It takes humility and a recognition that if I do not know, 
and I remain in darkness. Anything you want to learn today, it is available. You want to make yourself more valuable, even physically, it is available. Your destiny helper comes to your house and you don't know how to cook and you say, God will favor me. You did not bless the person. Are you not in trouble? Can't you go and meet somebody to learn how to cook as a way of preparing to honor your destiny helper? A man old enough to be your father comes to your house and after two hours, you give him a cup of cold water and he says, God forbid. <laughs> Hallelujah. You do not understand the principles of relationship and courtesy to greet. Those little, little things can rob you of the power of God. You may not see the power that is invested through knowledge. Believers, please hear me. You must understand the word dimension of the power of God. Go for the word. I immerse myself in knowledge. The knowledge of scripture and then wisdom from men and women with proven track records. It's not only God I want to know. I want to know the men I am sent to. I want to understand how men think. I want to understand the principles of influence. I want to understand leadership. I want to understand how to impact people. It's not an impartation. It comes by knowledge. Go and buy books. Go online. Settle down. Give yourself revelation projects and settle down and learn. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Please obtain grace to learn. Obtain grace to learn. Don't be lazy. Reject laziness. It is of the devil. It is a robber and a destroyer of beauty and color from a destiny. A lazy generation that just believes in impartation alone will only be making a mockery of themselves. Let me tell you sincerely. It is often said, on easy lies the head that wears the crown. If you are a man of God, the only thing you learn is not, it's not only prayer and fasting and Bible study you learn. You must learn administration. You must learn finances. You must learn leadership. You must learn people skills. Are we together? There are all kinds of veterans of leadership within this ministry. Go and subscribe for their programs and learn and build capacity. Sometimes we suffer the pain of a generation that does not want diligence, but we want results. Oh God, it doesn't matter how you do. Let me just see the results. I know you are merciful. The mercy of God is not a license for foolishness. Let me tell you the truth. A diligent hand shall be made fat. There are many lazy preachers, I'm sorry to say. There are many lazy business people. You want to have influence over people? It is not only anointing you will need. An empty and a dull head. Nobody will come and submit to any leadership that does not have capacity. People are intelligent people. Don't forget that some of the people you will find around you are also leaders in their corporations, conglomerates. They have children. Some of them are employers of people to the thousands. They will not come and sit down under a leader that does not know what he's saying. There has to be a high level of advanced, developed intelligence. Your mind must be alive, not your spirit alone. And it takes diligence. Receive grace to be diligent. Shout a loud amen. Receive grace to be diligent. Avoid premature manifestation. If you are not ready, sit down. When you are ready, the door will open. If the door is closed, it's God's mercy keeping you so that you don't rubbish the opportunity he's giving you. Sit down. Sit down and learn. Make up your mind. That when God brings you to your season of appearance, you will not bring shame and reproach to yourself and to the name of Christ. Hallelujah. The understanding of scripture empowers men to release that dimension of God's power. The Bible says, there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty, to penury. That means if you are a greedy person who is always withholding, forget about increase. Whether it is in the secular or in the kingdom, 
you see giving is one of the major active ingredients as far as kingdom wealth and prosperity is concerned God will not trust you I hope you know that wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement no maybe in the world it will be but in the kingdom wealth is a trust from God a man can receive nothing except it is given to him from above and there are conditions that must be met God loves everybody but according to Matthew chapter 25 I think from verse 16 or so the parable of the talents the Bible tells us very clearly that he gave unto one five talents he gave unto one one talent uh, two talents he gave unto one one talent according to their several abilities not according to his love for them he loved all of them but he gave them according to their capacities and at the end of the story we see that he was just and fair to have done that in the kingdom God will not cast his spell before swine you want God to commit to you the grace for nations and territories it has to rise and match your level of spiritual and intellectual acumen number three what is the third platform for accessing the power of God one we said encounters particularly encounter with the spirit of power number two power that is released through knowledge understanding of scripture and the mysteries of the kingdom number three power that is accessed through covenant alignment with anointed vessels the third dimension of power don't assume you understand what I'm saying is power that is accessed by coming into covenant alignment with careers of spiritual power careers of the anointing in Philippians 1 and verse 7 popular scripture Philippians chapter 1 and verse 7 the last sentence there says ye all are partakers of my grace Paul did not say ye all are partakers of the grace or his grace he knows that it all belongs to him but with respect to what he was teaching he said it is grace given to me but you can be partakers of it ye all are partakers of my grace there is power that is accessed through genuine connection covenant alignment with men and women that have been so trusted by this grace from God it is true there are dimensions in the spirit that God will mandate that you receive and function in by reason of your connection with certain men and women that have become carriers of grace in as much as the same Lord is rich unto all and ultimately the Spirit of God is the giver of all but God has so distributed this or he has so designed this system in his kingdom there are levels of spiritual power you can never access in isolation to certain graces that God has put within your life within a territory and largely speaking within the body of Christ grace every time I have the privilege of going to minister in a nation or in a church especially if I'm preaching for any of the fathers I don't just prepare the sermon among the many things I prepare I also prepare my heart and I try to study by the Spirit and through experience and through scripture the various graces that are at work in the life of those individuals so that on one hand as I go to bless them by the privilege God has given me on another hand my heart is open to receive what grace do they carry what standing do they have with God let me submit to you my dear people please listen to me there are men who have a standing with God there are men who God has covenanted and sworn by his name over their lives they have a standing with God there are men who have become the friend of God truly there are men on earth who are friends of God they are not just children of God that is wonderful but by reason of relationship and intimacy they have come to a point where God can call them friends shall I hide these from my friend Abraham seeing that he shall be a mighty man 
one of the proof of friendship is that you are not afraid of opening anything including secrets when someone is your friend you can open even things that are not privy to everybody and say this is it you are my friend hallelujah there are deep things that even though everything is with respect to scripture you have to get to a stage and a level with God where God will show you certain things that make for national impact territorial impact across regions and continents you can be a friend of God and that comes through living a life that desires to please him completely you can be the friend of God there are people who have a stand with God that means you can tap into their work with God and experience certain possibilities that your personal spiritual level has not yet gotten you to the level that you should have I, I, do you understand what I just said that means based on your personal spiritual level some of these results and possibilities should not be happening in your life but you can tap into their grace their covenant and their work with God and you will find yourself manifesting possibilities that are far higher than your personal level of spiritual growth even before you enter it it's true it's true I have seen people carry graces I have seen people manifest possibilities that when you vet them scripturally their level of intelligence and spiritual acumen has not gotten them to the point where they should be commanding that level of result but they have been able to align through understanding humility meekness genuine covenant connection I'll give you an instance Elisha there is no record of Elisha being personally and meticulously trained by Elijah we know that the sons of the prophet were the ones who were being trained by Elijah Elisha poured water in the hands of Elijah that means when he was going for his lecture he would serve him and wait and allow him to teach the sons of the prophet so based on his level of renewal based on his level of um, uh, what do we call it now maybe his, his his level of spiritual transition he could not have even received that anointing not to talk about a double portion I'm sure that's why the sons of the prophet were very casual because they knew that this guy was only wasting his time but he stood there with hunger and he says all right you desire this you have used honor you have used submission you have used genuine connection if you can see me as I'm taking and that mantle came upon him and the sons of the prophet testified they said the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elisha another example when Jesus sent the disciples two by two and sent them seven by seven I hope you know the Holy Ghost had not come upon them yet they were not saved none of them was born again because Jesus had not been glorified there was nowhere they would have been saved because Jesus had to die and to resurrect by the glory of the Father for anyone to be saved so they just went with his word under his covering and as they went to preach the Bible says they returned rejoicing they marveled because they didn't feel anything there was nothing around their life that should produce that result they said even the demons were subject to us by thy name and he said do not rejoice because of the issue of demons rejoice rather that your names will be written in the in 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 heaven that should be the basis of your joy it is possible to come under a ministry like this and while you are still learning the principles of prosperity while you are still learning the principles of dominion you can genuinely come under this grace and start seeing certain results happen in your life even before you get to that realm there are people who have entered that realm already you will see that if you ask them and say defend these workings of the spirit they will tell you sincerely i am still growing however because of their covenant connection with understanding you have heard me tell you my precious people fans there is no inheritance for fans I am a fan of this I mm -mm. there is no inheritance for well-wishers it is people who connect with understanding 
Hallelujah. You look for instance at a ministry, respectfully speaking, like redeemed, our father in the Lord, Baba Deboe, and you see the spread of redeemed globally. Let me submit to you, you will be joking to believe that that spread is just an independent reflection of every of the branch or every of the pastor's personal work with God. It will be a joke. There are certain things you see that is a product of a corporate grace moving people together. Are we together? You can step into certain graces and begin to prosper even while you are learning. People will see you and they will mistake you. They will even say, listen, come and teach us about wealth and prosperity. And you say, listen, I will only embarrass myself. I'm still learning. It's just the grace of God that is at work in me. Some of these graces are activated through the power of prophetic speakings. Like when they speak over you like you are about to receive this night. You see, as you receive it with understanding, the realm of the spirit responds to the fact that you received it. Listen, when he said by this time tomorrow, he did not have to wait for everybody in Samaria one by one to believe. People just sat down and by the next day they were eating well under the corporate grace of a prophet. Hallelujah. One of those profound revelations is our salvation. Imagine if everybody had to die on the cross. Jesus said, all right, I've done it for you. You saw exactly how I did it. Everybody get a carpenter, be on your way to any mountain around your area and die. There would probably be less than 100 people who will be saved by now. Because nobody will want to die. Yet he did the dying. And then he got up as a conqueror and came to you. You do not qualify. It should never be for you. You are saved by grace. And that works even not of yours. It is of God. And no one, there's no boasting there. And he gave you his life. And you simply received it by faith. And it was credited to you in the realm of the spirit. That when he died, you died too. It's not just that he died and you received his life. It's that both of you too. Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, it's not just that he died and gave me life. I also died with him. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. And the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. You look beyond me, You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond me, oh. I'm the one that you have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Please hear me. Do you know? The advantage of being planted in the house of God where the power and the grace of God is at work it is a system of advantage provided for you so that while you grow God knows that it takes time to grow let me tell you the truth it takes time to be born again it takes time to learn it takes time to be filled with the Holy Spirit it takes time to begin to learn the ways of God while that is happening if the realm of the spirit and if God depended on your personal spiritual life, you may die before you come to know your rights in Christ and walk in authority. So in the interim, he places systems of advantage. One of it is the power of prophetic covering that you can come under the covering and the grace. The blood that was put on the lintel, they didn't put the blood on everybody's head. Even if you were somebody in unbelief, once you were in a house where there was blood upon the lintel, the angel of death will pass. It was not about everybody's, the, the personal fate of the individual. As for me and my house, there are times that your grace can cover the house. There are many of you, I submit to you, 
there are many blessings you have received today that may not necessarily be a reflection of your prayer life your spiritual life but certain intercessions have happened for you and you come into that inheritance because you see when the realm of the spirit is distributing the advantage it distributes to everyone who is part of that fold this is true remember the example I gave you some time ago that when you stand to take a shower do you have to lift your leg to touch the shower the leg does not have to be worried all you need to do is just stand in front of the shower for a while it will look like it's only the head that is enjoying the water but every part of that body will receive sufficient water as far as your bathing is concerned that's how it is it may start from the head if the leg decides to go and wait at the door then that leg will not experience that process of bathing it is dangerous especially in this end time to alienate yourself from the grace and that that corporate covering is a risk and i hope you know that proximity is not the same as connection no you can be close to an anointing you can be in, within a house like this and yes, not have anything happen to you. Look at Elisha. He was very wise. He said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? As one who had already carried the double portion, he recognized God and he recognized Elijah. And the Red Sea parted. The Jordan parted. Hallelujah. You are reaping where you bestowed no labor. Others have labored. But with understanding you can step into the harvest please hear me this is why you see if you are genuinely part of this ministry my heart bleeds if there are certain graces that you don't carry in your life they, believe me this is not pride there are some graces and some dimensions of God's power that should never be a struggle for your spiritual life while you grow to step into that realm in experience there is already a portal that has been opened through sacrifice and if you have the understanding you can step on it do you believe what I'm saying you're part of this vision and men do not arise to help you you don't experience the favor of God the presence of God is a struggle no something is wrong we don't claim to have everything but there are some things he has given and for someone God brought you here to tell you you are your family members you are struggling this is unnecessary it's unnecessary you cannot come to an oasis where there's water and then you are struggling and begging and crying for water it ought not to be so they came to the one who supplies bread he multiplied bread and gave everybody they ate and ate and didn't know what to do there were five loaves and two fish I mean um, uh, 12 baskets left there are certain graces that should be at work in your life in this house you see everybody rejecting you nobody opening up doors for you you cry and there's nobody helping you you are rejecting the investment of the spirit you are also rejecting the possibilities that reside within this place. Is someone learning? We also give that which we have received. Not every grace you see here just came as a result of personal encounters. Out of the abundance of that which we have received from the fathers that is speaking, it must speak in your life too. In the name of Jesus Christ, you're a man of God connected to this vision. It's not about size or whatever, but you should not be small. He said, I will glorify them, they will not be small. I will multiply them, they will not be few. It's a grace. Have you accessed the hear ye him anointing? Have you accessed the grace for favor? What is it about the house rents that God cannot arise and wipe your tears? Yes, you are learning. But can you not come under that grace? It's more than money. How about the manifestation of the presence of God? How about your prayer life? Apostle, I'm struggling with prayer. I don't know that grace is not there. Then there is something you are not maximizing. There is a grace in abundance.
Jesus that if you can open up your heart and you receive with power and receive with grace please hear me we are in the days of his power where the nations need to see Jesus revealed through the display of the multifaceted dimension of God's power God is counting on you ladies and gentlemen God is counting on me it, thank God for all the people we keep talking about in history but they have gone they have joined the cloud of witnesses right now God is counting on us and in the name of Jesus we will not fail God in the name of Jesus you will not fail your family in the name of Jesus you will not fail this nation the days of his power where we will start hearing that someone came out of here and while he was on his way going somewhere something just happened to someone and they said the baby is dead and you stand and say in the name of Jesus as a child of God who has been taught I decree and declare that baby come back to life now and the baby jacks back to life and everybody within that territory the parents the families are we together that you go home and there's one church just close to your house and they say dear brother um, can you just come and share and just tell us something about the love of Jesus and you don't sit and say well I'm not really in ministry you know we are not this thing about revelation it's not all of us that have it it's an indictment on the spiritual investment upon your person that you enter that church knowing that God does not call the qualified but he qualifies the called. you stand being that you have been instant in season and out of season knowing that you are not alone and the Lord walking with them confirming the words with signs and wonders the opening of your mouth becomes deliverance for people and the grace of God sweeps over that assembly soul saved lives healed and changed and transformed There are some of you here, there are businesses that will call you and say, come and be part of us. Not by adding any value, become like the ark of God in the business, in the name of Jesus Christ. That people will call you and say, listen, this is, we are a group of business people. We have discerned that you carry an unusual grace for favor. And we want that grace to be at work in us. Come and be part of this business. What is my role in this business? Nothing. Just pray and speak for our welfare. That the list becomes as David. Please let me tell you this before we round up. Everything that has made you feel you are not up to. Everything that has made you feel it is not for people like you. I want you to reject it tonight in the name of Jesus. It is true that is, there is room for growth and there are levels in the spirit. But can I assure you, cast not away your confidence, my dear people. It has a great recompense of reward. Therefore, I cast every spirit that has kept you to make you feel that you are not capable. Maybe some of you in ministry, I cannot speak well. Maybe I cannot sing well. Every spirit that has brought you down, demeaning and downplaying the investment of God in your life, you are afraid of laying hands on the sick because you are afraid of embarrassment. I curse that spirit right now in Jesus' name. Hear me? Some of you, this spirit may have come as a result of mindsets you have received from people and from situations that have downplayed and demeaned you they make it look like it's not for people like you. You are very weak people. You are very this and that. You don't have to argue with anyone. But I want you to stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has set you free. And do not allow anyone or anything rest in the love of God. I may not look like what you want, but he loves me. And that is the most important thing. If God has loved you and has approved you, then that is it. Don't get into this, especially this our world today of bending into all kinds of things and become a victim of people's emotion. Rest in the confidence that you are loved, you are chosen. 
Hallelujah. I believe in Jesus. But let me tell you sincerely, I believe in myself too. Ah, I believe in myself. In the name of Jesus. I'll be lying if I tell you I don't. Mm -mm. I believe in Jesus. But this man standing before you, I believe in myself. My only limit in life is the voice of God and the law of process. I don't see limitations in front of me. Truly, this is my mindset. If God sends me to any nation, as I go to that nation, I don't go there wondering what kind of demons are in that place. Will the people listen? No. There is a level of confidence, not pride, that you need to have to know that you can be trusted. God can trust you. Man of God, as we are wrapping up, the Lord is speaking to you. God believes in you. Even Satan is afraid of you, but you have refused to believe in yourself. Crying for the approval of men as the basis of your confidence. That is a big mistake you are making with your life. You need to believe in Jesus and you need to believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Believe that you are loved. Believe that you are part of the fold of God. Please hear me. Believe that God loves you and believe that he has a great plan for you. That when God is talking about the mighty army, don't exclude yourself. Don't use any kind of sentiment, age, background, whatever it is. Physical mundane parameters. Uh -uh. There is none of us that is ever qualified enough based on the credentials of the flesh to be used by God. But since he has drawn us by his mercy, we come running with joy and gratitude and confidence. He can send us to any nation and we will go. He can tell us to take the globe and we will go. There is no fear. If you are afraid, there are many things you will not do in your life. You will be whipping up and attracting sympathy from people. There are some of you, it's fear that has stopped you from building that house till today. You have the land, you have everything to start fear. What will people say? God must grant someone grace. For somebody, you should leave this meeting now. And by tomorrow, if somebody tells you I'm sick, tell him in the name of Jesus, can I pray for you? I have been trained. I lay my hands upon you and I declare in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God, be healed. Apostle, what happens is the person is not healed. Did you collect money? No. You get into trouble when you collect that if you, if you collect money. Are we together? Someone comes and tells you, do you know every door is closed? How can I reach Apostle? And you tell him, well, you may not be able to reach Apostle, but do you believe that I will stand and agree with you? Huh. And while you are saying that, the spirit of grace is ready for you to speak. And you say, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead. And whew, a miracle happens to that person. The next time they see you, they say, Pastor. He said, no, 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 I'm a banker. I said, that's none of my business. It is the dimension of you that minister to me that I will call. The Bible said they will call you ministers of our God. There are many of you, God is about to give you a new name. By reason of the mighty things that he's doing in and through your life. A new name. A new name. Some of you will sing and worship and sing to the nations. And just one song that God gives you will go across the globe, blessing and healing and lifting people. Hallelujah. That, that reminds me, come, David Dam, when is your, your worship program? I just, I just remembered. I just remembered. We pray for you. This is a son in the house and make sure you support him and pray for him. When is it? 19th. Let's pray for him. It's not about concert. It's not a time of jamboree. This is a worship time. You can go and stand there. You can go and, and be part of it. Get more information from him. Father, 
in Jesus name we pray for Dave that he will sing the praises of Jesus to the nations we pray for this worship experience coming Lord anoint him like never before anoint the worship team like never before anoint all the organizers like never before let no flesh be glorified in your presence Lord I pray that as he lifts up your name you will respond to his needs you will increase him I use him as a point of contact to pray for the entire worship team Lord is a new season for them oh you will take these precious people to the nations they will sing your praises across the length and the breadth of the nations bringing revival bringing hope healing and life to many in the name of Jesus Christ we pray amen and amen God bless you I just thought to do this hallelujah so encourage him some of you after service the Lord may lay it in your heart just to drop a seed and bless him why not encourage him encourage him we believe in our people and will invest in our people as God grants grace hallelujah and don't come and say we should pray for you when you are not prepared let me just say it now because believers are masters of 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 do your homework and come we will bless we can bless you for grace to do your homework that one I will do it even now but once you do your homework and come believe me we will not waste the influence God has given and when God lifts you make sure you don't forget him please don't bring shame to the Lord too many people have done it already let there be people who will stand even with crown, a crown on your head you can still let the nations know that he is king I think it's good for the night you can wrap up now stand on your feet please I want to pray one serious prayer over our lives and I want everybody to receive We need to be endued with power ladies and gentlemen you are believers in Christ and I want you to know that by reason of your being grafted into Christ there are levels of power and grace your life should command power comes in levels grace is come in level what you can receive I want to pray and speak over your life and I want you to truly receive from the depth of your heart you will be surprised to see the kind of results you begin to command. You believe that? In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Every season of spiritual dryness, with no power, no manifestation of the word of God, you have come to Bethel, the house of God. I decree and declare, in higher dimension of spiritual power, may, may it rest upon you now. for signs and wonders like never before I release it upon you receive it now I release it upon you receive it now supernatural signs and wonders through your hands in the name of Jesus Christ the grace for intimacy the grace to spend time in his presence until you draw forth into your life the riches of heaven I impart that grace upon you I impart that grace upon you let me impart the grace for prayer there is the spirit of prayer and supplication the grace to travel until you touch dimensions of spiritual reality receive that grace right now in the name of Jesus Every spiritual slumber, every spiritual lukewarmness, I declare be free from it right now. The capacity to understand scripture, high level spiritual illumination, I declare may your eyes be open, may your heart be open, may your mind be open. In the name of Jesus Christ the fortitude to comprehend spiritual reality 
I decree and declare may that grace rest upon you hear me for the things you need right now that your spiritual level has not yet um, based on your spiritual level you may not seem to purchase those spiritual realities I stand by the power of this apostolic and prophetic mantle I still shift you to step into that level I shift you to step into that level levels of favor levels of honor levels of influence levels of speed let me pray over your finances please receive it in the name of Jesus Christ I sincerely pray for you from the depth of my heart that by the power that raised Christ from the dead I forbid your hands from being dry I forbid your hands from being dry enjoy the gift of man enjoy the gift of man enjoy the gift of man favor from the north favor from the south favor from the east favor from the west step into prepared blessings hallelujah where you have been despised from tonight I place a mantle of honor upon your head. Everything that has refused to grow in your life, I declare the grace that makes for multiplication and growth. Whether it's your work, whether it's your business, whether it's your ministry, experience exponential growth. Finally, I pray for you in the name that is above all names. All the people who have been mandated to come and be blessed by your anointing, wherever they are, I decree and declare by divine coincidences, by the leadings of the Spirit, I send them to your life to be blessed. I send them to your church to be blessed. I send them to your organizations to be blessed. In the name of Jesus from today I want you to carry this consciousness I am a blessing say it please one more time say I am a blessing for the last time say I am a blessing reject anything that wants to make you look like you're a cause anybody who does not appreciate you for who you are just leave them with their ignorance but as far as you are concerned I am a blessing Say it in the morning, say it in the afternoon, say it in the evening. Whenever you go to work, you are not just an employee waiting for salary. I am a blessing. The power of God is at work in me. I am a blessing. A blessing to your husband, a blessing to your wife, a blessing to your children, a blessing by reason of being a doctor, a blessing by reason of being a man of God. I am not a curse. I don't bring pain. I don't bring regret there is no regret around me I am a blessing in these says shall all the families of the earth be blessed when you carry the mentality you are a blessing when people come to you in need you don't just look at them and pity yourself you are happy because if you cannot give them money if you cannot give them counsel don't forget you are anointed don't say I cannot do anything. They may ask you for money. They may be confused. But there is something you have. You can tell them, listen, I may not be able to give you any money here, but let me pray. That grace, let it work. Go. And they will think they just left until they return with fearful testimonies. Be a proof producer. Be a sign producer. Be a wonder producer. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be a multiplier factor to the advancement of the kingdom. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, 
kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching